je pilný. Mé jméno je pilný a chtěl bych... My name is pilný a I'd like to adopt a standpoint to this discussion. I believe that even on the our existing conditions in the Czech Republic, not everything is in order. We need to be able to look at the role of media in our society. In our country, majority of printed media is not in the Czech hands, but in German hands. That's one thing. The second thing is that the majority of mass media, even public media, is taking sides with the rightist parties. And there is only one daily, and it's Halon, of any the leftist newspaper, and it's being ignored. And the leftist trends do not have access into these mass media. It's problematic. In our country, there is no censorship, but there is a strong self-censorship that you were mentioning. Let me give an example. It's an old example from the past, but I think it still tells you a lot. In 1999, where Mrs. Albright was the Secretary of the State, at that time, there was an armed aggression against Yugoslavia by a NATO armed forces and the US armed forces. And in more than 70 days of this aggression, without the permission of the Security Council of the UN, in former Yugoslavia, the infrastructure was damaged companies were damaged and destroyed and the bombs were consisting of not non-enriched uranium and among those who perished were 16 our colleagues because Serbian TV was attacked too and what our pro-regime mass media did they didn't say a word not even Václav Havel said a word who this act of aggression without a precedence commented as a humanitarian bombing. The only person who had his voice heard was a signatory of the chart 77, Yuri Dinsbir, who, contrary to Havel, denounced this aggression and he also spoke about the uh, journalists who never mentioned this event. Uh, my name is uh, Jana Karaskova. I'll speak in Czech. We heard a lot about Syria, Libya. Uh, I wanted to ask you, I don't know whether you've heard about it. There are also views that the Arab Spring, the colored revolutions, the local revolution here and so on, was controlled by the secret services. Um, and I wanted to ask Mrs. Albright, unfortunately she's not here because uh, she uh, knew uh, General Wesley Clark, who was also the head of NATO for some time. I wanted to ask her what she, she thinks uh, about him accusing the Bush administration in 2007, Mr. Rumsfeld, Mr. Bush, that, uh, that they actually uh, designed the project for the new American century and planned the disintegration of the Near East. He said that in Pentagon after 11th of September, he became acquainted with a memorandum of, of the defense secretary saying that they must attack Iraq, although they had no, no cause uh, yet, and that they ought to focus on Somalia uh, and Sudan. This is uh, interesting 
sharing information. Uh, Ch Czech TV refused to inform about that, and we filed a complaint against the head of Czech uh, TV, Mr. Dvořák. I think this must be discussed. We have to discuss uh, not only China uh, critically, but also the fact that in the United States, uh, telephone calls, mobiles are controlled by the Secret Services and um, that we have a very similar situation in America as we have in China. So why has this not been commented upon? Uh, we have time to respond to the secret police and the internet, but I just want to add that, yes, um, the internet uh, started as a military project, and there has been much discussion about uh, monitoring and uh, abuses, possibly, uh, by uh, government sources. And I'd like Mr. Ashowski to respond to the question about the speed um, and the gospel. Uh, would you like to do it? No, I would answer for the other. Oh, please, yes, yeah, sure. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sure. Well, yeah. Sorry, what was the question? Well, the question was about the, the speed of the revolution in oh, Egypt. Yes, yes, it would have been possible without. So, um, this uh, revolution has been branded the Facebook revolution. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is that uh, uh, it sounds like a very popular word that uh, can be used in Western media. Facebook revolution always sounds good. And um, I think, I believe. Um, I wouldn't go as far as calling it uh, a Facebook revolution, and I wouldn't go as far as saying it wouldn't have happened without Facebook or without Twitter. Uh, but I would, what I would do, I would say, is that uh, it definitely speeded up the process very much, mm. considerably. So without it, it would have happened. It just wouldn't have happened as fastly and as, fa as effectively. And the reason for that, of course, as I said before, is uh, that the regime didn't really know how to cope with these new uh, forms of media and these uh, new forms of communication. And they were too slow in opposing uh, uh, the gatherings, the protests, and all of that, because they didn't really know how and when they were going to happen. Uh, but we cannot forget that the Arab Spring initially started not with Facebook or Twitter, it started with a nobody food vendor in Tunisia who decided to li uh, light himself on fire and um, <laughs> died in the process and as a result uh, in his town uh, a lot of protests happened which spread over to Tunisia, which spread over to Egypt, which spread over to Libya, which spread over to Syria, which spread over to the rest of the Arab world. So as much as uh, social media had a considerable impact in it. It uh, is not the only reason why it happened, and as I said, we cannot forget that Mohamed Bouazizi is the mm. one who started right. it all. And Mr. Nash. Yeah. If you may, I will answer the second part yeah. of the question, which is like, is this the democracy uh, basically citizens want? I think we should understand that democracy is a long process. Democracy requires education, requires a culture of democracy. And what happens now is, we, we had, at least I'll talk about the Moroccan experience, we had a, a fair, transparent elections, and they brought this, the only opposition party that never took over the governments. The left parties were on the governments before, the right parties were before. So this opposition party, which is the Islamist party, is the only one with the legitimacy. In my belief, I think in a real democracy, we should give the chance to Islamic party with the agenda that they have, or at least they have the, the legitimacy of the people. They play the game of the real democracy for five years, and after that we play the, the election game again and get it over. What we should be very careful with is to not lose the privileges of democracy we have today. And this is the role of the, the civil society, this is the role of the international community, not to go back and lose this freedom that we have, these ele fair elections that we have, to make sure that next time we have another chance to vote. And this is, I think, how basically democracy should be, and this will take years before we get like a maturity for political parties, maturity for citizens, to have a classical democracy that we know of. If I can only add to that, yeah, sure. I completely agree with him that um, you can't just um, uh, ban uh, Islamist parties from running or being part of the government just because you don't agree with them. As much as, as, I, as I disagree with them and don't really like them, uh, the re reason why the revolution started in the first place is to give everyone the opportunity That's right. and not just... Uh, because pe because things are not really going the way you initially thought they would, you should you should not ban them. That's that would be the completely wrong way to to pose that problem. That's right. 
Um, thank you so much. Um, the role of the media uh, as related to human rights is an old question. And in fact, many of the discussion we had here were, some, were things that were discussed in media studies for the past decades. What is different with the new social media is the scope, the size, and the uh, relative access uh, to the information that has dramatically changed. And we have not reached um, a conclusion to speak of here, but I hope that you can bring back um, some new ideas um, back from this forum. Thank, thank you for your participation, and I'd like to ask you for a round of applause for the wonderful panelists. Thank you very much.